welcome to your office hours. So, I'm going to try and answer some of your questions. I'm going to use what you know as your anchor points, and I've kind of mapped it out on our fancy little whiteboard here. So let's start with your first comment or question. So, you basically said that water is some type of atom type of thing. And you're on the right track, you're thinking of the building blocks of chemistry, which is the basis for all this. But, really, this entire thing, water, is a molecule that is made up of atoms. You have two hydrogen atoms, and you have one oxygen atom. And this is important because these elements can interact to form ions. And you were correct about the ions, because you did say that ions or particles have some kind of charge. And that is correct, because the ion is a charged particle. And this is important because it's going to help in uh, understanding the processes in terms of how cells interact with each other, how elements interact, and how different uh, things on the cellular level occur. So that's going to lead us into our next point. So here's where you had a bit of a misunderstanding. So you said nerves are made up of atoms, which is not entirely incorrect, but it's not very accurate because nerves are actually made up of nerve cells. So that's one point to know. To jump from there, you also made a comment about the bilayer, and you said the protein bilayer is made up of hydrocarbons. However, it's uh, usually referred to as a phospholipid bilayer, and that is what is made up of hydrocarbons, because proteins are made up of amino acids, which is entirely different, but still important. And it's important to know about hydrocarbons because, and the phospholipid bilayer, because things can be let into the cell and let out of the cell which is known as selective permeability. And these ions, whether they're allowed in or out, is going to determine their functions, how they bind, how they interact. And specifically, because we brought up ions before, the polarity is going to be very important, especially in regards to ions. Because polarity is what determines, determines how things bind, what things can bind, and determines if things are favorable on the cellular level. Because polarity deals with the charge and how polar and, or how charged a molecule is and that is very vital when it comes to binding interactions and function. So from there we're going to jump into uh, a little bit more broader, more complex uh, system which you mentioned, you had some questions about in comments and that is how signaling occurs and you're correct, S signaling occurs in the brain via a charge. So here we have a nerve cell and it, that has a voltage, much like a battery. And when this voltage changes, it's going to lead to the different interaction of these ions that we've talked about. So for example, you have a mechanism called the sodium potassium pump, which is going to depolarize across this axon and myelin sheath. And it's going to try and put the cell and the signals in a more favorable position to make sure it's efficient, it's strong, and cell signaling is at its best. So everything is optimal. And so jumping off of there, uh, you made a comment about brains being made of nerves. And that is correct. Because these nerve cells are what make up these nerves. And these nerves are in bundles that go to the brain and go to other parts of the body. Because that's how our human body and the other mammals and other animals communicate. It's via these signals and this entire nervous system. Almost like a tree. You can think of it like a tree with different roots that help uh, with signaling and processing. And from there, you had another comment in regards to uh, nerves and the brain, parts of the brain. So you mentioned, what does the forebrain have to do with carbon? So carbon is important because you have all these hydrocarbons and carbon-type bonds within the body. Carbon is, other than water, is actually very abundant. And so you have to break and form bonds, which is going to help release and store energy. And that energy expenditure is very important because you want the body to kind of be in a state of balance. You want uh, charges and energy to be in favorable positions so then cellular processes can be uh, optimized to their maximum potential. That's why carbon is so important in parts of the brain and how other elements are also important in uh, the interactions that occur in the brain. So to kind of go on to the next and kind of broader last questions you had, you had three main questions. So how does thinking happen, which is a very large question, how does chemistry fit into the brain, and how does that deal with the brain? And what is the deal with neuroscience? So chemistry, as I mentioned before, is the building blocks and the nature and of the interactions of the elements in the brain on the cellular level is going to determine function, and it's going to determine how things operate and work, because everything wants to be in balance. 
So how does thinking happen? Thinking happens based on all of the signaling between cells, uh, atoms, and molecules, and all these other substances. Because you have a stimulus, and the signal is sent to the brain, it's processed, and then you act appropriately to interact with that stimulus. So that's kind of how thinking happens on a more general level. And we can get into that more later on. And chemistry, like I said before, it, all of these blocks are the fundamental uh, foundational elements that help determine interactions and help create homeostatic balance in the body. And that's really what neuroscience is all about. So you had a question about biochemistry and neuroscience. So neuroscience is basically how these chemicals work together in this biological system to interact with the world around us. So hopefully this answers your questions.